Hi everyone, in this video I'm showing you how to make a stunning entremet inspired by chef Pierre Hermé's famous Ispahan macaron. The flavor combination for this cake is raspberries, roses, lychees and of course almonds. This cake is bursting with floral aromas and notes and the textures it combines are truly delightful. The base for this cake starts with an egg and an egg yolk. We're saving the white for the raspberry mousse. Beat these with a whisk until they're frothy and then add 15 milliliters of grapeseed oil. This ingredient will keep the base dense and moist. Continue mixing rather vigorously for half a minute or so and then add 50 grams of sugar-free rose jam. Because the rose jam is very sweet and fragrant, this is the only sweetening agent I'm adding to this cake base. Continue mixing very well until the jam is completely incorporated and then pour in 30 ml of whipping cream. This should also be at room temperature. And once the cream is incorporated, you can combine your dry ingredients. 30 grams of cake and pastry flour, 30 grams of almond flour, a gram of baking powder and a tiny pinch of salt. I think a small whisk is ideal for this task because it breaks up the lumps and gives me an even flour mixture. But you can also sift your dry ingredients if you want to. Mix with the whisk until just combined but do so vigorously and then switch to a silicone spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl. You'll have a rather fluid batter. You can bake the batter in a cake ring or a springform pan, just line it with parchment paper. However, I prefer to use a 16 cm round silicone mold. And why is that, you might ask? It's because it saves me some time, because it doesn't require any lining or greasing. Bake the cake for 30 minutes in a preheated oven at 150 Celsius with the fan on. And let it cool down to room temperature in the mold, you'll notice that it shrinks a little. To get it out of the mold, cover this with a board and then invert it. The cake will drop on the board. Lift the mold slowly and carefully because this is a rather sticky cake. But if you do it like this, I guarantee you, you'll get it out in one piece. Now this cake forms that baking skin, I don't know how to call it otherwise, and I like to rub it away. It comes off very, very easy. And now freeze the base until we're ready to assemble the cake. The flavor powerhouse of this cake is a lychee jelly and this starts with three gelatin sheets hydrated in ice cold water. And while the gelatin sits, we can make the lychee puree. In my jug, I have 150 grams of lychee pulp and to it I'm adding 3 ml of lemon juice and then 10 grams of xylitol. Take an immersion blender and crush the pulp, then tilt the jug and blend away for 2-3 to three minutes until it's as smooth as possible. It will, however, have somewhat of a texture and that's totally normal. Now heat it in the microwave to 60 degrees Celsius and add the hydrated gelatin sheets. Squeeze out the excess water and then mix the gelatin in with a soft silicone spatula without creating any air bubbles. You don't have to mix much because the gelatin dissolves immediately. Pour the lychee puree into a 16 cm silicone mold. If you don't have one, use a bowl that has the same diameter as my mold but line it with plastic wrap. And while I fill the mold, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. Shake the platter on which the mold sits to level the puree and release the bigger air bubbles and then refrigerate the lychee puree for at least an hour. The raspberry jelly is the next layer in this entremet and that starts with a gelatin sheet hydrated in ice cold water. And here I have 60 grams of seedless raspberry puree and to it I'm adding 5 ml of agave syrup and immediately afterwards 2 ml of fresh lemon juice. Now give this puree a good stir with a teaspoon until everything's well incorporated and then gently heat it in the microwave until it reaches 60 degrees Celsius. 
Now give it another stir to make sure it's homogenous and then add the hydrated gelatin sheet. Just squeeze out the excess water whenever you work with gelatin sheets. Mix gently to avoid creating air bubbles until the gelatin dissolves completely and you'll notice this happens in no time at all. Your puree will become shiny and glossy. By now, the light jelly will have set in the fridge, so it's safe to pour the raspberry puree over it. Make sure you work fast here because you're only adding a very small quantity of raspberry puree and it'll turn into a jelly very, very fast. Tilt the mold so the raspberries cover the lychees completely. Then shake the platter to make sure the surface of the raspberry puree is even and you don't have big air bubbles and then take the mold back to the fridge for another hour. For the rose ganache, you're gonna need another hydrated gelatin sheet. In my microwave safe bowl, I'm combining 75 milliliters of whipping cream with 40 grams of sugar-free rose jam. You'll notice that as soon as you start mixing with your spatula, the cream will thicken a lot. However, keep going until you have a perfectly homogeneous mixture and then take this to the microwave. Heat it in short intervals. Mix between intervals until you reach a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. And now just add a hydrated gelatin sheet. If you prefer granular gelatin, you could have used 2 grams of that and 15 milliliters of cold water. Just stir gently and that's it. As soon as you notice that your mixture is shiny, it's time to add 35 grams of the very best white chocolate you have. Cover the chocolate with a hot liquid and let it sit like this for 2 minutes. After that, start stirring and pressing until the chocolate melts completely and you have a fluid ganache. However, if you notice that the chocolate doesn't melt completely, you can heat the mixture in the microwave in 5 second intervals. When the rose ganache is at body temperature, you can safely pour it over the raspberry jelly. It's best if you keep the bowl as close to the surface as possible to avoid creating any big air bubbles. Then give the platter on which the mold sits a very good shake so the surface is even. And if you notice any big air bubbles, just pop them with a toothpick. Now freeze the triple insert for at least 4 hours. In my bowl I have 200 milliliters of very very cold whipping cream that I'm whipping by hand to a very soft peak. The cream has to remain completely pourable. Put it in the fridge for now. Hydrate 3 gelatin sheets in ice cold water and set them aside for now. To make sure they're not stuck together and don't hydrate properly, I like to get them in the water one by one. I've prepared a water bath and in my heatproof bowl go 30 grams of raspberry puree that I'm mixing with 2 milliliters of lemon juice and then immediately afterwards 30 grams of xylitol and an egg white. While the gentle steam heats the bowl, I mix constantly until my mixture reaches 60 degrees Celsius. When your mixture reaches this temperature, cut the heat and keep mixing for 3.5 minutes on the steam to pasteurize the egg white. Then remove the bowl from the steam and let it sit for a moment. In my bowl, I've heated 110 grams of seedless raspberry puree in the microwave to 60 degrees Celsius. Add the hydrated gelatin sheets and mix gently until the puree becomes shiny. Avoid creating big air bubbles. Then set the raspberry puree aside and let it cool down to slightly below body temperature. While the egg white mixture is still hot to the touch, start beating it with a hand mixer on high speed 
until it forms a beautiful light pink meringue. Continue beating until it cools down to slightly below body temperature like the raspberry puree. The bowl shouldn't feel warm and then you know your meringue is done. But to be sure, it's best if you use a kitchen thermometer. And this raspberry meringue is just about right. Now add about a third of the meringue to the raspberry puree. At this stage, you won't be able to fold it in. So cut through it, mix, and then start with folding motions until you have a perfectly beautiful pink homogeneous mixture. When the mixture is homogeneous and looks like this, I mean, look at that beautiful color, you can safely pour it over the remaining meringue. And now just apply the same technique, cut through the meringue and then start folding until you have a beautiful, homogeneous, very light and airy mousse. And if you want it, you could serve this as a standalone dessert. Just spoon it into cups and let it chill. Anyway, back to our entremet. You can add this entire mousse to the softly whipped cream you just took out of the fridge and start mixing with a whisk. Try not to lift the whisk though, you don't want any more air in. Then you can switch to a silicone spatula to scrape the sides and bottom of the bowl and fold the mousse until it's perfectly homogeneous. Because the components for my mousse were a little bit too cold, the mousse already starts to set. But in this case, it's not a problem. Because the inserts don't go on the surface, I can simply dollop the mousse into my silicone mold instead of pouring it. This is an 18 cm silicone mold and I'm adding about half of the raspberry mousse I made. Had it been more fluid as I wanted it, I wouldn't have to do all the leveling with the spatula, but this is necessary to avoid having air pockets on the sides of the cake. Now simply get the triple insert out of its silicone mold and place it right in the center of the raspberry mousse with the lychee jelly facing down. Press and turn at the same time until the sides of the mold are evenly coated with raspberry mousse. And this is exactly what I mean. Now simply dollop the remaining mousse over the frozen insert and level it a bit. Don't worry about precision here because we're covering it with the cake disc anyway. And if you made it this far and haven't subscribed yet, I'd really, really appreciate it if you did. Okay, so now take the frozen cake disc, flip it so you have the even surface inside and gently press it right into the center of the mousse. The cake has to be exactly on the same level as the edge of the mold. Take a small knife or a spatula and remove the excess mousse. You can enjoy this later on while the cake freezes. After that, use a wet napkin to wipe the sides of the mold clean and take the entremet to the freezer for at least 8 hours. This is my sugar-free neutral glaze. I'm gonna link to the video where I show you how to make it in the description below and at the end of this video. I already added some powdered food coloring, but I want a little more. Adding food coloring is entirely optional, of course. 
Stir gently to avoid creating big air bubbles and then cover the glaze with plastic wrap directly on the surface and let it cool down to 32 degrees Celsius. The plastic wrap is there for two reasons. First, it prevents the glaze from forming a skin. And second, it makes it very easy for you to remove almost all the air that rose to the surface of the glaze. And now let's get the cake out of its mold. First, pull from the sides and you'll notice they come off very easily. And then take the mold into your hands and simply pull away the silicone. And it doesn't matter how hard you pull, this is platinum grade food silicone. It won't break and it won't deform. I'm gonna link to my mold in the description below. And now, place the cake on an inverted bowl that sits on a large plate. And if you don't have a plate that's so large, simply line your work surface with plastic wrap. This is a bit of a balancing act, but it's not that difficult. I really like this part. Start pouring the glaze from the center of the cake and move your way outwards in circles until you pour all of the glaze. And that spot you see there is nothing but a dreaded air bubble that happened simply because the mousse was too set when I put it in the mold. And that's the worst case scenario when the mousse is beyond pouring and sets too quickly. Nevertheless, I decided I could live with it and I covered it with a rose petal. Remove the excess glaze from the bottom of the cake and move it to your serving platter with two large offset spatulas. Let the cake thaw in the fridge for 4 to 6 hours. In my plastic bowl I have 150 grams of white chocolate that I'm heating in the microwave for half a minute. After stirring, half of the chocolate is melted and this is an excellent time to add a little bit of food coloring. I prefer to use the same powder that I use to color the glaze. You'll notice that you still have solid chocolate, so it's best if you continue heating it in the microwave in very very short intervals to avoid burning it, just until it reaches 42 degrees Celsius. And the best way to know this is to use a kitchen thermometer. To temper my chocolate and make sure that my end product is shiny and snaps, I'm adding another 50 grams of white chocolate and I'm stirring it continuously until it melts. The chocolate is ready to work with at 29 degrees Celsius. I'm pouring the chocolate on an acetate sheet that's slightly longer than the circumference of my cake. Then take a small offset spatula and spread the chocolate in an even layer to cover the entire acetate sheet. Then let it sit like this for 1 or 2 minutes before you lift the sheet from your work surface. Carefully peel away the acetate strip and then put it back on your work surface. And now simply wait for 3, 4, 5 minutes depending on your room temperature. The chocolate needs this time to start setting. And how do you know when it's ready? Well, if you touch it, it shouldn't stick to your finger. This is the perfect time to shape it. Now take the strip and wrap it around a cake ring. The chocolate belt goes into the fridge for 5 minutes and then it gets to stay at room temperature for an hour. After that hour has passed, simply lift the chocolate belt from the ring. If the chocolate was properly tempered, it won't stick. Then peel away the acetate very carefully, not to break it. I'm just trimming a little bit from the edges so they don't overlap too much. Now carefully take the chocolate belt into your hands and wrap it around your cake. You'll notice that it has a bit of elasticity. This is also a sign that the chocolate was tempered correctly. 
press very gently against the sides of the cake, the chocolate will stick to the glaze. Since I had some chocolate left, I also made some narrow rings and then I broke them into pieces. I'm arranging some of these chocolate pieces in a way that gives my cake more height and then I use a dried rosebud to secure them in place. And to finish and give my cake an even more colorful look, I'm adding some dried rose petals. And this is how to make my beautiful rose, raspberry and lychee mousse cake. I hope you enjoy it. Make sure you serve it well chilled. And when you slice it, wipe the knife clean between cuts. Look at those beautiful, perfect layers. Enjoy it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Until next time, dessert lovers, 